what, what's it like being a mum? It's fantastic. Um, all of the things that people um, said that I would experience, uh, the, uh, that idea that you are suddenly um, uh, have this new person in your life that you couldn't believe that you could love so much, and that time will go incredibly quickly, uh, but that the nights will still seem incredibly <laughs> long, all of that has been true, but it's been wonderful. Have there been any big metaphysical moments? For one, one of the ones I had was that I realised that this was how much my parents had loved me. Yes. And I'd, I'm not sure I'd been that grateful prior to that moment. Yes, yeah, I, I did reflect um, uh, on on Facebook, actually, uh, just a couple of days ago. I made mention of my mum. I think because I've, I've certainly uh, feel at two levels, both um, how much, of course, she would have been feeling, the degree to which she would have felt these emotions herself when I arrived, um, and what I've subsequently have put her through as a teenager in her likes, but also just that gratitude for her being around now um, with me and how lucky I feel for that. Mm. Are you looking forward to going back to work? Well, you're back at work, you're Prime yeah, Minister again, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I mean, to a certain degree, uh, you know, that's not a role that, that really leaves you. Um, I, certainly over the six-week period, I stepped back, but I... Uh, I, I didn't relinquish that, that sense of, of responsibility. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, I certainly did have a little bubble here for a time. Uh, and I had every faith um, that the acting prime minister would do a brilliant job, and he has. But in the back of my mind, of course, was my return. And I was looking forward to being back, but I know that being back will be different. In what way? I'm a mum now. And, and and so how will the differences be material, meaningful, manifest? Yeah. I think probably at two levels. At a, at a personal level, it's just the day-to-day. -day. I'm a mum that needs to meet all of the responsibilities that come with being a mum, making sure that um, Neve has the basics, uh, that she's fed, that she's loved, that she sleeps as much as we're able to get her to sleep. And, you know, by, we will do that together. But that's, that's the practical reality of my, my new role. And then there's another level. Um, uh, you know, I, I do think that the way that I've always viewed the world has probably always been from the lens of someone who's probably quite a nurturing um, um, person. Uh, certainly, you know, I'd like to think of myself as someone that's quite compassionate and empathetic. But when you add probably the layer of having a child, I think it probably takes on a different, a different lens again. Mm. You've used the word responsibility twice in this interview so far, which has been going, what, roughly three minutes. Once your responsibility as Prime Minister, once your responsibility as a parent. And that's a hell of a balancing act. Helen Clark and that lovely thing she wrote for The Guardian said, there are no doors closed to women. This is the message mm. from you. But the multitude of doors that are open, the responsibilities that you have, are still a balancing act, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, and there is guilt behind every door. <laughs> and that ought not to be the case. Oh, yes, the the look. Theoretically... Yeah. We should be starting afresh minus guilt, but yes. that's absolutely yeah. part of the package of being a... Yeah, absolutely. And that is, you know, I do not have a monopoly on guilt. I think, um, I think in, you know, women in all different walks of life will feel to some degree that if they place more emphasis in this area, they're sacrificing something else over here. Uh, gosh, if I could take away, if I could gift all women the absence of guilt, I would. Um, but that's the reality we still have. Uh, and that's probably still part of the progress that we need to make, that we can make choices and just feel satisfied with doing the best we can, both in the workplace but also with our families. And that's a very powerful message of what you're doing, isn't it? Of what I'm trying to do, but I'm not going to pretend I'm superhuman and um, I'm not going to pretend that I have the same lot as every other woman. I'm privileged. I'm very, very lucky. Uh, I have a partner who can, um, who can be there alongside me, who's taking up a huge part of that joint responsibility because he's a parent too. Um, he's not a babysitter, he's a parent as well. Uh, and at the same time, I also have uh, the ability to have her with me um, some of the time. So that means that I'm privileged and I'm lucky. A lot of women don't have that choice. So, uh, so acknowledging that. Mm. Do you remember when you were driving to Government House to become Prime Minister? You probably won't remember, but I remember. I do. And you gave a I gave all the landmarks, including yeah, yeah, KFC. Beautiful. It was a beautiful interview <laughs> in the car. And you, it was a fantastic interview. And you said, uh, I want to make kindness part of government. Mm. What, what is the world that you want to build for Neve? What, 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 what is the New Zealand that you want her to grow up in? I actually, I, I want to make sure that we 
govern in a way that reflects who I think we already see ourselves as being as a nation. You, know, you ask a New Zealander to describe the country that they, that they live in, that they belong to, and they'll probably make some mention of how important the environment is to them, how beautiful it is. Uh, and probably underneath that lies their sense of um, the guardianship role that we have. Uh, they would probably talk about us being fair-minded and now that means different things to different people, but there is this inherent sense of, I think, social justice in New Zealand. Um, and I think this inherent compassion to us as well. You think about all of the journalism you've done over the years, um, John, where you have talked about issues like child poverty and how much that has resonated with the New Zealand public when you tell people stories. When you don't talk about the policy or the numbers, but when you just tell people stories. I want uh, a country that actually um, fulfills our own perception of ourselves that we're leaders, that we care about our environment, that we care about our people. Is it tougher to achieve that balancing act as a Labor Prime Minister than as a National Prime Minister? I look at the kind of feedback you're getting at the moment and there are people saying, first of all, business confidence is at its lowest level in the survey since the GFC. Mm -hmm. so, so, there, so there is a tribe there who just aren't pleased to see you in government. <laughs> And on the other hand, we have nurses and teachers saying, now that you are in government, what are you going to do for us? Yeah. Because it has been so tough for so long. Yeah. So how do you reconcile the forces that want you to be less than Labour and the forces that are demanding you behave like Labour? Yeah, do you know what? I think in both those scenarios, when you look at the business confidence, when you look at people who are seeking to have long-running uh, Labour issues resolved, there are high expectations of us because we're problem solvers. You know, we're called progressives for a reason. We progress change. We're not afraid to tackle the problems in front of us. Now, when you look at the economy right now, um, actually, you know, John Key has flagged some of the issues we're facing. Yeah, we have a productivity challenge in New Zealand. We've got a labor skill shortage. These are not new issues, but we've committed to tackling them. That means change. That means modernising our economy, diversifying our economy. So it's not just about dairy and housing. That places us in a vulnerable position. Now, any government that says we're going to modernise means that there's a little bit of uncertainty because with change comes uncertainty. What I'm committed to is coming out and really uh, fronting with that business community and saying, we're responding to the challenges you've thrown at us. We have to do it together. I get that I need to instill that confidence in you, but I'm going to do that. But, but on the other hand, the teachers and the, and the nurses are saying, hey, hold on a sec, yeah. you know, we were tied to the railway track and you were the guys who were meant to be untying us. And I, I guess the point Alan Johnson from the, uh, from the Salvation Army is making is that the fiscal cap, for example, is straight out of National's playbook. In other words, are you, in order to mollify people who were never going to vote for you and actually don't even want you to be in government, mm -hmm. being too cautious? Why are you enforcing a fiscal cap at this level, for example, when uh, the cost of debt is so, so low at the moment and there is probably a huge mandate from your supporters to spend more? Yeah, no one has a monopoly on uh, running the economy, economy in a sustainable, responsible way. Uh, and that's always been a part of Labor's agenda, and it's part now of this government's agenda, because actually we can't achieve all of the things that we want to in the social space unless we have an economy that's performing well. The difference between us and past governments is we want it to perform well for everybody. There hasn't been an equitable share of the economy's growth and performance with workers, with our teachers and our nurses, in the way that there's needed to be. And look, that's why we have had a payoff for the nurses. That's been double what it was um, under the previous government. And why we didn't just look at pay, we looked at their safety and their environment too. Now, obviously, that's something that's still, we're waiting to see whether or not that meets their needs. But those are the kinds of issues that we are tackling as a new government together. What I would also say, you know, on the making sure that we're attacking, you know, just dealing as well with those social issues, the first thing we did, we came in in October, by December, we put five billion dollars into low and middle income families. Five billion dollars. That's a massive investment in the people who need us most and we're doing that whilst delivering surpluses. You can do both. You had a baby six weeks ago. I'm just listening to you and you just, no, but you're just up, aren't you? You're just going, you're going. You are Back in Prime Minister mode. Oh, I, I'm up. I guess I never felt like I was down. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's an extraordinary energy.
that I just witnessed then. And also a sense of vocation. Whatever you think of your politics, that was a persuasive sense of vocation at work. So you're ready. You're ready to go back to Wellington, aren't you? You're I, ready. you know, I think in part, it, the thing I found interesting about this idea of return and going back to work, um, it doesn't feel like a job to me. <laughs> you know, it's not something I get dressed and go into the office and do a nine to five. Um, this role uh, and the chance to make change, um, that has been my every waking moment um, for going on 10 years now. In fact, a bit earlier, if we're going to hark back to the, the mm. my days as a young person. So actually, these six weeks um, have been in a, a part of just what has been an extraordinary opportunity, not a job. So, so when are you heading back down to Wally? Uh, Saturday. And, and the three of you are going? Yep. Yep, front and, pack. <laughs> yeah, and, and Clark, who's being a beautifully doting dad in, yes. in a room not far away. Yes. So you'll set up in Premier House, yep. Yep. which is so close to the Beehive, yes. so Neve and Clark will be able to come and go. Yep, yep, and we'll make it work. And you're excited about that, aren't you? I am. Actually, I'm, uh, I'm you know, keen to, um, to get down there and um, feel assured that, you know, we are going to make it work. Mm. And to demonstrate to others that we will too. I might be at the odd press conference with a little bit of spill on me because I'm not going to hide the imperfections of parenting. I don't think anyone needs that. Thanks for having us, Prime Minister. It's been a, a pleasure being in your home. Thanks for joining me. Mm.